uh, construction, right? So now <laughs> we know that we have constructed the Hamiltonian, right? But so I want to show you this Hamiltonian is actually uh, just uh, can be used to construct the Z gate. But before that, let's review something. Last time we said that if I want to construct a unitary matrix, this is purely just math. We say we want to rotate them through a unitary matrix, maybe this one. It corresponds to this matrix equation. And this matrix equation where you map to the broad sphere is to first rotate about the z axis by lambda, then rotate the, about the y axis by theta, and then rotate about the z axis by phi. Okay? So how about a so actually I, I did not change it. I want to make it more general. A, this is not just z gate. I want to construct a phase shift gate. Just, okay, phase shift gate. So what is a phase shift gate? I want to make it so that this equals to, do you still remember what's a phase shift gate? Okay, very good. And in order to make this, co uh, okay, yeah, little I5, this is a phase shift gate, right? So you do nothing to the basis state, it shift the uh, second state by e to pi I5. So, what do we do? Just like we did for not gate, right? We just equate that. First, I equate cosine theta divided by 2 equal to 1. This gives me theta equal to what? Zero. zero, right? So if theta is equal to zero, this two term satisfies automatically. Because they are all zero. Yeah, they are fatal you are zero, right? You just told me. So they satisfy. So we need to satisfy the last one. The last one is e to the i lambda plus phi cosine zero divided by two equals to e to the power i phi. Then naturally, you will just pick lambda equal to zero, right? So what does it mean? If theta equal to zero, lambda equal to zero, a phase shift gate is just that rotating, doing only doing the third rotation by phi about the z axis. Right? So what, what do we get? If um, phi equal to pi, then you get the C gate, which is one zero zero e to the power i pi equal to one zero zero negative one. Is this okay? So basically, just just to review to you that okay, if you can rotate about the z axis by phi, then you will construct the phase shift gate. When phi equal to pi, then it is a z gate. Okay, so now our goal is that can we implement these gates using the physics? And now we want to use the Hamiltonian we just learned. And that is the so-called Lamor precession, right? Now I have an external magnetic field here going up, okay? And then I have a qubit state again, I just embed it to there. So I cannot relate any anything to this directly, I need to go through the math, right? So let's look at what will happen to the system. We just learned the Schrodinger equation. We say psi equal to alpha zero plus beta one. A very general state on the broad sphere or in the hyperspace, right? And our Schrodinger equation tells us that I h bar partial uh, psi partial t equals to h psi, right? This is the Schrodinger equation, right? Se, right? It would be on your cheat sheet or Google level mess up. 
Then I'm going to make it into a matrix form as we discussed earlier. I H bar. I'm going to just put partial partial T outside alpha beta. I know that it's going to apply to individual elements. But what is H? We just show you the Hamiltonian. We just constructed. This is the H we have for this system, right? This is the H when the magnetic field is pointing up. So this is equal to mu B, the whole thing, times 1, 0, 0, negative 1, alpha, beta. Yeah, because this is the Hamiltonian. You need to include mu B because we showed earlier that is the eigenvalue. So with this, we can have two equations. The first equation is to equate the top row, I H bar, partial alpha partial T equals to mu B times alpha, right? Just this row, one times alpha plus zero times beta. And the second equation is I H bar partial beta partial T equals to negative mu B times beta. Right? First row, I mean second row, zero times alpha, negative one times beta. I get two equations. Is this okay? Make sense? Let me see. Okay, so let's just solve the equation. This is relatively easy. Something time derivative equal to itself. The solution is what? Exponential. Exponential, right? So it means alpha must be equal to some initial value, alpha naught times e to the power, but what exponential, right? We need to do some math. It is mu b divided by i h bar times t. mu b divided by i h bar times t, right? And I don't like the i to be at the bottom. I'm going to just make it alpha e to power negative. And I also try to make h. This is, uh, I don't know if this is a good way. Maybe I call it h z. Call it h z divided by i h bar, where let h z equal to mu b. I just want to spare some book use h z. Right? I just use this symbol to replace it. Uh, and of course, I need to multiply this by t. Is this okay? I do this exponential, right? I move one i h bar to the bottom. And then, of course, then this is the solution. You can try to differentiate it. Differentiate this, you get mu b divided by i h bar, cancel, and then they are the same. And then I call this mu b as mu h z. So now I have negative h. Okay, this is wrong, right? No one point out my mistake. Where should the i be? Should be at the top, thank you. Because my goal is to bring the i to the numerator. Okay. Is this clear? Any questions? If no, this is just math, then of course another equation I get is similarly, I have beta equal to the initial beta times e to the power. Uh, this time it's not negative, but plus i h z divided by h bar t. Everything is the same. These two equations, the only difference is this is plus, right? This is negative, right? So when this is negative, this is positive. Same equation. Now here you tell me how the state change as a function of time under this Hamiltonian, under this external magnetic field. It say that you may start with alpha zero and beta zero. What is alpha zero and beta zero? Just the initial state, right? Think about this. It's just saying that the initial state is alpha zero. 
0 plus beta 0, 1. That is what it means. Start at t equal to 0. Correct. But do you still remember the equation? The equation was, if I want to map into the block sphere, this is cosine theta divided by 2 e to the power negative i phi over 2 0 plus sine theta divided by 2 e to the power i phi over 2 1. Do you still remember this one? Maybe you forgot but you know what I'm talking about, right? In order to represent a general state on the broad sphere, we came up with two degrees of theta, theta and phi. And now theta and phi has some meaning on this broad sphere. Correct? Now, then we are seeing the final state is what? Final state is just that your alpha multiplied by an exponent, exponent, right? Exponential term. Beta multiplied by another exponential term. So final state is everything is the same. Let me still copy everyone. Cosine theta divided by two e to the power negative i phi divided by two. But now you multiply the whole thing by e to the power negative i h. z divided by h bar t for the first term. Is this okay? Because this is what we are saying. Your alpha zero, your alpha become r zero times this exponential term. This is alpha zero, right? Now it becomes alpha zero times this exponential term. How about for beta? Well, everything else represent beta zero, but it is multiplied by i h z divided by h bar t. Make sense? So what is this? This is just equals to cosine theta divided by two e to the power negative i divided by 2, the whole thing, phi, plus 2hz t divided by h bar, 0. Right? Because they are negative, right? So I take out negative i, I take out the 2, so I have the phi plus 2hz t divided by h bar. Do you see how I combine them? Just expo exponential, I add them together. Right? I try to group the term. Similarly for this guy, it's still sine theta divided by 2, but this one become i divided by 2, phi plus again 2hz divided by 2h bar. Okay, so what I have shown you is that under this external magnetic field, the state change from alpha zero and beta zero to this term. And this term is just as if what? We increase the phi by this angle. Right, because this one is talking about what is the theta? Theta does not change. Right? If your psi is here, the theta does not change. But the phi is changing by how much? It match here. So that it means it changed by 2hct over h bar. This is called Lamor precession. Okay? So let me say one more thing. That is what it is doing. It's going to rotate from here by 2hzt over h bar. Okay, so it's precessing, right? So 
if I have the broad sphere, I should have drawn it here. I have this x, y, z. Then for any state here, you will see that it's precessing about the z axis. That's called Lamar precession. By how much? It precess by, as I just told you, is 2 hz divided by h bar t, right? Let me check if that is correct. Yeah, precess by this angle after time t. Then let's plug in, right? Which is equals to 2 hz, I told you it just equal to b times the mu divided by h bar t. But b times mu, what is mu again? I also forgot the exact form. What is mu again? E divided by m h bar divided by 2, right? E divided by m h bar divided by 2, the whole thing divided by h, right? I'm just copying this 2b h bar, and then mu is e divided by m h bar divided by 2, right? So what is this? b e, oh, and I forgot the t, right? Divided by m t. Okay? So it moved by this angle. What is the rate? The rate, of course, is over, it becomes the angular frequency, right? The rate is like how fast it precess, right? It's equals to dBE divided by mt dt, which is BE divided by m. Make sense? This is in terms of radian per second. Is that radian per second? No. Uh, in terms of omega, 2 pi, 2, two pi, uh, how to say, uh, angular frequency, right? So this is called omega of L, which is the Lamo frequency. Basically, it's telling you that now, if I have a magnetic field pointing out, how fast your electron is going to precess about the broad sphere, okay? Then, then what's such a big deal? Well, we have created a phase gate now because by applying the magnetic field, you see that we, can, we created, one is the C gate. All you need to do if I want to create a Z gate, I need the phi equal to pi. Because of this, I just need to make BE divided by MT equal to pi. I set a time or the magnetic field so that this term becomes pi. Then I created a Z gate. Make sense? Um, the why, why, and, and let's just recall, right? Why rotating it is equal to a Z gate? Because I just show you here. A Z gate, this is uh, what we need from algorithm. Indeed, I just show you it is equivalent to the rotation about the broad sphere by phi, by pi. That is a Z gate. I already show you they are equivalent. Right? So that is the good thing about broad sphere uh, to help us to visualize. Then how about if I want to create a S gate, right? Do you remember what is S gate? It's just the square root of the Z gate, which means phi equal to pi over two. Then you need to set your time or the magnetic field so that this is pi over two, right? And then you want to create a T gate, you need to rotate it by pi over four, so again, you set your magnetic field and time equal to pi over four. Then you create the T gate. Okay, so now we have successfully created a physical gate, although this is not a practical one, yeah. So 
So, okay, this is interesting. Let's say again. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes, where wherever you are, just recess about that place. Yeah. So now you're going to see the more and more action of that recess. Yeah, you can say that if you want to do that. Yes, because you change to another state already, and then you just preset on their way on their what do you call latitude. Okay. Just like you move someone from South Pole to Argentina, then you start spinning, move to equator, spinning even more. Yeah, so it's not really auto, it's just the physics, because under the magnetic field, interaction with the magnetic moment, you will get this precession. And this is relevant to a real magnetic, right? In real classical, if you have an electron rotating about the uh, atom, you get the angular momentum, not spin angular momentum, but orbital angular momentum. It's going to precess also that atom because of this orbital angular momentum. And that's why this spin, they call it spin, because it really has a, the effects of a spin, although it's not really rotating. Okay. So the way that we want to apply Z that we just calculate what the time T needs to be and we just turn on a field for that length of time. Correct. Yeah. So this one, uh okay. Why this is spin angular momentum operator. Yeah, very messy my my notes. We still have five minutes. Yeah, let, let, let's keep. I, I actually want you to do some. Yeah. This is DC. This is DC. We have been talking about DC only, right? Constant magnetic field. This is for so more processing. AC is for rapid. We will talk about that later. It's so more difficult treatment. So you apply a field Yes. Uh, that's why this is difficult. This is just for instructional purpose. Yeah, and they do that for magnet nuclear magnetic resonance. You do need the uh, large magnetic field. But yeah, but this one is not easy for quantum computing. Yeah, but, but this is just to, for physics, right? You learn all this foundation, and then you do that later with something more. Yeah. Okay. So we still have time. Uh, okay. Um, Maybe I put this at homework, right? You try to find one magnetic field you need in order to have a twenty zero point zero one second Z gate, right? Now the time determine how fast your gates can operate. So you need a large magnetic field in order to have a short gate time. Okay, we can do that in in the future assignment. Let's spare this. Okay, then uh, in order to further play with arbitrary direction, right? This is a toy model. Right? We are pretty happy with this. But now